This is how this high-level racing driver transformed his technique and found over one second per lap. I'm gonna show you his driving, help you identify the biggest problem in his technique, then all the steps and challenges we had to go through to break his bad habit, which is, by the way, one of the most common bad habits at his level, so there's a big chance you're doing the same thing. Matthias has experience driving in competitive karting championships in Europe and is a top 5% racing driver in iRacing, with over 3,000 iRating. This is a heavily edited video from one hour of coaching, so every chapter is extremely important for the next one to make sense, so make sure you're watching the entire video if you really want to apply this to your driving without finding more problems. My coaching sessions always follow the same ritual. I watch the driver do one or two laps while taking notes, then we stop and start discussing the improvement points. Then we go back on track and try some exercises to create new habits on top of the bad ones, following some steps in the right order. I have a challenge for you in this video. After watching just a few corners from his driving, comment below what you believe needs to be improved. Then. Continue the video and finally edit your comments, adding what you learned from the session and comparing to your first comments about this driving. For example, what do you think could be better in this corner? Or this one? Exit was way too slow. Why? Could be faster. I, I felt it slow for me. You might even think that his driving is perfect. His lines look good, his braking looks good, everything looks smooth. But there's one thing he's missing that's costing him over a second per lap, which makes him a top 5% driver, not a top 1% driver. And here's one very important thing. He's doing the same mistake on every corner. So it's not like we're going to talk about track or each corner specifically. We'll be talking about his driving style in a way that he can apply everywhere, any car track combo. Okay, let's talk about what I see. I really like your driving. It's very consistent. It's very precise. Track usage is perfect. I would be your just passenger in real life. I would trust <laughs> you. Come to the Nords and you are in. <laughs> nice. I took five lines of notes and I'm gonna interpret them for you because you don't have my course, right? Uh, I, I own it. Oh, you, I, you, I oh perfect. Okay, yeah, yeah, easier, yeah. easier then. All but right. I haven't done it, yeah? So I just uh, saw some videos. At the very end, you're gonna have the car handling unit. It's the last module, it's quite advanced. But since you have a lot of experience, it's gonna be easier to explain to you, even if you haven't seen those. Let's say 100% is ideal grip usage. You are at 101% on the front and 98% mm. on the rears overall, okay. on average. It okay. feels like you're always leaving a little bit of grip on the table on the rear tires. For now, my notes mostly were about how you're turning into the corner, using mostly your steering as the main source of rotation, but not your brakes. I want you to feel that the weight transfer is turning the car more, not the steering. In a way, a good way to describe this is to create a contrast. What would be two extremes? The first extreme, when you turn way too much the steering and the car just goes forward, just goes straight, does not turn because you're asking for too much steering and mm. the car is not turning. You're abusing the front tires. The other extreme is you're turning just a tiny bit but you're shifting the weight with the brakes, with the engine braking, you're on the optimal steering and the car actually rotates more. So this creates kind of a paradox, right? Because in one situation, you're turning more, the steering, the car turns less. In the other situation, you're turning less, the steering, the car turns more. What I wanted to do is try to exaggerate a little bit the second situation, which is turn less the steering, but get more rotation. And to mm. make that happen, you need to use a little bit more the brakes on turn okay. in. The beginning of the rotation should be guided by the pedals and the engine brake, not the steering. And then as the car starts pointing, you're gonna have less engine braking because the RPMs are going down, less trail braking because you're releasing the brakes accordingly, and then you're gonna have to steer a lot more. So mid corner, like hmm. closer to the apex right before you get back on power, yes, you want to turn a lot the steering. But on turn in, you don't want to do that. On turn end, you want to turn in just a tiny bit and, and have those brakes on, the weight on the front tires to make the car rotate more. So okay, I want to try an exercise with you so you can like obviously feel that in an extreme mm -hmm. situation. And then we're going to bring mm -hmm. that down to 1% so you can actually do it wall cornering. The exercise is going to be spinning the car on purpose, under braking, right. on turn in. 
So that, that means spinning the car with no throttle involved. The three tools for rotation are engine braking, trail braking, and a little bit of steering. So the secret here is you're gonna spin the car with less steering. If you try to spin the car by adding more steering, it's gonna only understeer and, and get ABS on the front tires and it's gonna rotate less. So let's go on track and let's try to spin the car. Not enough brakes. You see, it's not easy. It's not easy to spin the car under brake. It's so natural to not spin the car, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, you got close there. Um, uh, not so close. <laughs> it was closer than the last coin. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, this was because of the curbs, actually. It was because of the curbs, but... Not because of the rotation. <laughs> Let's try again. That's too much, too much brakes, so you got into ABS. Um, if you get in, uh -huh. so that, you see, <laughs> spinning is an art, because if you try too hard to spin, and you turn the steering too much, you understeer. If you try too hard to spin, and you brake too hard, you get into ABS, and understeer. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Try here. Oh, that was okay. Didn't spin, but got uh close. I can't spin here because there's no grip on this thing here. You see? Ah, I'm... <laughs> nope. Yeah, Whoa. almost. Come on. Not so far away from this. That's close. <laughs> that was the best one so far. Let's try again. Okay, hear me out because this is important. You might be thinking that this is easy and that you can spin whenever you want or that this even looks stupid. But try it yourself and you will understand that it's not that simple. Try to spin. Try to spin. Understeer. Oh, that was some uh, good rotation. Now I, now, now I think now I better understand what you mean. <laughs> you see, we're trying. The name of the skill is inducing oversteer. The name of the exercise is yes. <laughs> you see, so what are you doing? You're actually getting the car to point to rotate more with less steering. Because you're using the brakes, you're using now the weight transfer to spin the car, to turn the car. Okay, okay. Try again here. Perfect. You got yeah. it. You got it. That's the yeah, skill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a lap again. And this time, you wanna use that skill of inducing more rotation with the brakes mm. on all turn in phases. When you're starting to turn in, you're gonna use that technique. For the car to point it's just okay. one percent of that it's like you're gonna take your your natural driving and you're gonna mm. add that spice on top of it mm. okay let's try that oh it's not so easy because i have to change all my habits what i have done my whole life exactly <laughs> my whole life you know <laughs> use the brakes to turn the car on turn in uh, i feel it more yeah, you have to use yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. you have to keep doing it all the way until you accelerate. Yes! Look yeah, at that. Yeah, I, I understand what you mean, Suryo. Actually, I do this when I do the go-kart thing. I try to steer the car actually not with the steering wheel, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Ah. There you go. Now you're about to see his bad habits coming back. Look how he drops the brakes mid-corner and completely loses his rotation. Oop, careful with dropping the brakes very fast. If you drop them like that, the, the rotation disappears. Okay. Also, what you're about to see is an oversteery entry that immediately becomes understeer when he drops the brakes too quickly and goes back on half throttle. Oh, you see, again, you dropped it. Like, you should yeah. keep it. Like, as soon as you get the hold car the to point... A bit. Hold the brakes longer? Just, yeah, hold the brakes longer. Like, as soon as the car points, you, you tend to drop it too fast. No, like, keep it. Keep and okay. wait for the car to point even more. Keep breaking for a long on this one. Mm. He 
he's thinking about a lot of stuff right now. So what you're about to see is a coaching technique where I'm gonna use only a few trigger words so he can hyper focus on one thing. Oversteer, then with the car, make it oversteer. Oversteer to the left and then keep oversteer. Yes! Oh, that fit actually right to me. <laughs> it was better, it was better. Let's do that again and oversteer even more. Let's master this so like you know exactly how to spin the car whenever you want and you can control it as well. Okay, so at this point, the driving is already very different to the beginning of the session. Because you can see him spending a lot more time taking control of the car and trying to turn the car more and more deep into the corner, which makes him a much more active driver. Best one so far. Try to break up a little bit less here. Break less. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. It was okay, but I overslowed the car. Okay. That was better. This is the best one so far. Yes, you're you're right. You're overslowing the car because you're 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 overthinking about the rotation. It's natural that you overslow for now, but that was already much better. Now let's do the same thing and try to not overslow the car. Now this is where we start finding some problems that come with this new driving style. Because he's using his brakes a lot more to turn into the corner, he has to steer a little bit more slowly. And in order to adapt to this new steering style, he has to actually change his turn in line. This is the reason he's starting to miss some of the apexes now. You know, okay, let's talk about one thing real quick. What you're trying is to use a slower steering to turn into the corner. The way you were doing before, you were turning in more quickly and using less brakes to turn. That means your line was a little bit like this. What you were doing before is kind of like this line. I'm exaggerating. And now with the inducing oversteer, you're trying to initiate the rotation a little bit more slowly to use the brakes to turn the car. And it gets to turn more, but it turns, it starts turning a little bit more slowly because your steering graph, instead of going like this, it's now starting to go like this. This is the, this is, this is the graph that we have when we try to rotate the car with the brakes. This is what we're working on. To make this graph work, you would have to actually move it to the left a little bit more or less like this. So that means your turning point with the new technique has to be earlier. Okay. So yeah. now, because you're you're missing all the apexes because you're trying the new technique, but you're still using the same turning point. So what you're gonna do is mm. just do it, a, start a little bit earlier, and then you're gonna be able to get that good rotation and still hit the apex. So okay. just move the turning point a little bit earlier. All right. It's very, very, very subtle change, remember. By the way, he found three tents on this sector already, and we're not even practicing the rest of the track. That's perfect. Do the same thing on the next corner. Over slow. Over slow. Less brakes. Yeah. You know, one thing that's happening on that left hander that I think you don't notice is that that left hander has a lot of camber. Okay. There's a lot more grip than you think. The car is like 150 kilos heavier on that corner. You use the brakes only to turn the car, not to slow it down. Nice. Turned in too late. You can turn in earlier. Yeah, way too late. Oh, I think the problem is that you're breaking a straight line. Do you have time to break on a straight line there? I don't think we need to break on a straight line there. You start breaking really? and you point into the... Yeah, you start breaking a tiny bit and you already start pointing. Actually, I always try to break in a straight line. So that's not always right. I mean, you start on a straight line, but right immediately you start slowly turning. To that corner, you're not, you don't need to slow down that much. You only need to point the car. Oh, look at that. <laughs> okay. So it's Tokyo Drift. Hmm, okay, 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 okay. Uh, let me share my screen again. What's happening right now with your trail braking? Like, this is good. We're getting good rotation here. But then the more rotation you get, like you, you do this and then you drop to zero. So oh, really? yeah, you're, you're, you're holding at like 30%. So the rotation here is good. But then after that, do something more like this. So you're just holding too hard. 
it's it's only on turn in like uh, it's a part of the process like you, what you were doing before was kind of like dropping it kind of too early like this and then power so i told you hey use more brakes around here and you are okay. but now you're still using too much brakes deep into the corner and then dropping it to zero so instead just like do something like this so, so it must release earlier yeah not it, holding the pressure after pressure. release the brakes according to how much the car is rotating so here you're going to ask for the rotation and then the more the car rotates the more you start dropping the more the car rotates the more you start dropping because in a way the I, I have a lesson about that on my patreon it's like you start braking right and you start turning in kind of early here so you want to keep the brakes a little bit until you get into oversteer and then you want to drop but then you get understeer so you're gonna keep the brakes a little bit more and then you get oversteer and then you drop and then understeer and then you keep brakes. so ultimately what you really want is to minimize the gaps so you what, what happens here is okay now you're gonna be more sensitive so you're gonna release earlier you're gonna be more sensitive and, and sense the understeer even earlier and then what happens is through this process you start actually building a, a perfect release that is somewhere in between so mm. it's just like you really you're chasing the o you're chasing that rotation, but as, as the rotation happens, you drop. So what's happening right now with your driving is that you're getting the O right here, and then you keep too much, and then you keep too much, uh, but that's actually so much that you get mm. into ABS, and this becomes okay. understeer because of the ABS. So you're just holding the brakes too much. What you want to do is kind of like keep dropping it more according to how much the car rotates. Oh. Okay, so kind of earlier, yeah, faster, quicker. Yeah, which is very difficult. Depending on the rotation of the car, of course. Yeah. yeah, because, and that's why it's difficult, because initially I wanted you to ask for rotation with the brakes. Now I'm asking you to release the brakes according to the rotation. Like, it's kind of confusing. It's just because it's a different phase. It's on turn in, I wanted to use the brakes to rotate. But mid corner, mm. you're going to release it, it, and you're going to use less brakes to rotate. Because if you keep using too much, then you don't get that rotation anymore. You get understeer, because you get ABS. Mm. Okay. Actually, I just realized the uh, time. Oh my god. And I try not to straight line breaking here. Nice. Very good. You got it. Now you know what to practice. This is your homework. Do the entire uh, lap. Work on it. Do the entire lap thinking about this on every corner entry. Use the brakes to turn. Use the brakes to turn. Go through the course, the motor racing checklist, and you're gonna see that a lot of stuff there is gonna reinforce and give you like extra useful information on achieving this, achieving this optimal rotation. And then oh, as soon as you nail this, you see like, because this is a big track, this is worth like more than one second per lap. Absolutely, absolutely. It's so different. <laughs> yeah. No, this is, this is it, man. This is the process. Yo, I have a gift for you for staying until the end. Use the coupon YouTube20 to get the best online course in the planet about racing technique, the motor racing checklist. You can have access to 60 lessons incredibly advanced and detailed lessons that will make you a much better racing driver. You have absolutely no idea. If you have any questions, send me a message on Discord and I can talk about all that. And by the way, there's a lot of racing technique content on my channel, so make sure you watch this video.